up in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now see, Sister Monique started off with some of those, I guess what we like to call old school songs. I like to call them throne room songs. Because those are the songs that I like to sing that gets me right into his presence. And if it's all right, we're going to continue with that this morning. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Anybody love Jesus today? Anybody thankful for his presence, his name? Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Say, I love Jesus. He's my Savior. When the storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. He loves me. Say, I love Jesus. He's my Savior. When the storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. He loves me. I love Jesus. He's my Savior. When the storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. He loves me.
praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome, welcome today. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap in the house. Amen. Praise the Lord. So glad to be here today. Amen. To worship God in our own way, in our own special way. Amen. <clears throat> Greetings to my parents that's joined us today. Bishop and Evangelist Dixon is in the house. The best I could do is show you both of them right there. But I like to I like to share a little song with you today. I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Thank you for being with us today. Some folks Brother C Dunn would ride. Have houses and land, and some folks choose silver and gold. Oh, yes, they do. But these things they treasure. Forget about their souls. I decided to make Jesus my choice. Oh, some folk would ride. Brother Robert Gibson, I know you know this one. Brother Robert Gibson from Jamaica, I know you know this one. My 
Praise the Lord, everybody. I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today, we'd like to welcome Pastor Zena. Why don't you go ahead and do the welcome for us today? Go Amen. ahead and God do the God bless welcome. everyone. We welcome you welcome here to today. SCCN. Amen. What of Life Ministry is so glad that you've tuned in to this Palm Sunday. Amen. With us to lift up the name of Jesus. That's what it's all about. It's all about Jesus. Amen. To lift up the name of Jesus. So we welcome you here to, um, here with us to just praise his name, hear the word. Amen. To be encouraged. Amen. From the word in the name of Jesus. We thank you all for tuning in. Those that are watching by way of the nursing home, the hospitals, firehouse, police station. Amen. Those that are listening by way of the radio. Thank God for our nightly viewers. Those that always show up we thank god for you as well amen so just um just enjoy jesus with us on the day amen 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 <laughs> amen. Amen. amen amen so be it pastor yes. zena said enjoy enjoy jesus with us today. Enjoy. <laughs> enjoy jesus with us today all right let's go over to the big board let's go over to the big board let's go over to the big board Amen. Let's go over to the big board and do special welcome. Then I'm going to get into the word. Special welcome, special mention today. This is so special. This is so important. Amen. First person today, first person today to church was Brother Leroy Dixon out of Port Moore, St. Catherine. Brother Leroy and the entire Dixon family. Leroy Dixon and his family. Welcome today. Amen. Amen. To our service. And then my parents, Bishop and Evangelist Dixon. Yes. Amen. I put a picture up here to honor them today in our service. Amen. Good to see you today, parents. Amen. And Sister Audrey Fowler. Amen. Out Amen. of, uh, out of uh, Saint Jamaica, St. Catherine. Sister Audrey Fowler from Jamaica, St. Catherine. Good to, be, good to see you today. And the entire Fowler family, Caleb, Fiona, and Audrey. God bless you all. I hope Fiona is watching. I haven't heard from her in a long time. Amen. And uh, Sister Paulette Moran. Amen. Out of St. Catherine, you. Jamaica, saying happy Sunday, happy everyone, Sunday. from Portmore, St. Catherine. God bless you, Sister Paulette. And then the minister, Minister Robert Gibson. Amen. Greetings to you, Bishop, and also Amen. to Pastor Zena. Good to see you today, Robert. Uh, glad to have you today from Portmore, St. Catherine as well. The Jamaican church is in the house. Lakeisha Adams out of Amen. Bristol, Pennsylvania. You. And the Adams family, the entire Adams family yeah. from Bristol, Pennsylvania. Bristol, Pennsylvania is still holding down the fort. The Bristol, Pennsylvania church is still holding down the fort. Amen. So good to see you guys here today with us in Jesus' name. And so the next person I see here is... Lake, uh, Lisa, I see Lisa on here. Lisa yeah, Prince, God, God bless, bless you, Lisa. Lisa. That's your cousin. God bless you. Good to see you and your entire family. Yes. I mean, your entire large family. <laughs> Amen. Greet you in Jesus' name. And to all of you that's watching today that's not that have not logged in or said anything on the chat, we know you're there. We know you're watching. Greetings today and welcome to our presentation of the gospel on today. Welcome to our presentation of the gospel today. So today I have a word for you. I have a word for you today. And uh, the whole world today, uh, most, most places today is uh, talking about uh, Palm Sunday. Most places today is talking about Palm Sunday and the old Palm Sunday story of Jesus riding into town on a donkey and all that kind of stuff. Today, I got to tell you something. I wasn't led today, Pastor Zena. I wasn't led today to talk about Jesus riding in on a donkey today. I wasn't led to talk about that today. Amen. I, I, was, I, was, I, I wanted to do it. I wanted to talk about Jesus riding in on a donkey today. <laughs> I wanted to do it because that's what everybody's doing. But, but something inside of me prompt me to go a different way today. Would you all bear with me today? Uh, somewhere on the Internet, somewhere on the Internet, 
there's a preacher somewhere preaching today about Jesus riding in on a donkey, and they put down palms for him to ride on singing Hosanna. And uh, everybody sing Hosanna on one day, and the next day they all say crucify him. Somewhere on the internet, somebody is just preaching that right now. But today, I want to go a different way with you guys today. I want to go a different way with you guys today. The Lord has given me a different word for you guys today, all right? A different word for you guys today. And if you don't want to hear this word, you could also feel free to jump over to somebody else's church online and go listen about Jesus riding a donkey. But today, I want to talk to you about end time people and end time trade. I want to talk to you about the end times. I want to talk to you today about the end time. That's what the Holy Spirit put on my spirit to talk to you today. I don't know if I have a witness out there that is really interested in hearing about the end time. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Do you see things going on? Uh, Brother Minister Robert says, I went to Stony Hill last evening and I met some folk from your former church. So I was there begging, <laughs> begging you up, bro. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Robert. Said he met some people from my former church in Stone Hill. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So if you notice, I put a picture up, up of my parents on there today, my mother and my father. I want to honor them today. They're here with us. They're always here with us whenever we come on, continually supporting us on here. And so today, praise God, I, I'm honoring them today, Bishop and Evangelist Dixon. Would you, would you, please, give, you, would you please give my parents, would you all out there, could you all please give my parents some love? Could you all, could you all, just, could you all just give them some love on there? Could you all just... Did I do it right? <laughs> Did I do it right? <laughs> I'm gonna mess up the heart, but could y'all could y'all just send up some hearts out there for my parents today? My um my mother celebrated a birthday on uh the sixteenth of this month, and my father's birthday is coming up on the first of April. So within the next what, the next four or five days, he's gonna be celebrating a birthday as well. My mother was the 16th of March, and he's going to be celebrating his birthday. And Caleb had his birthday, And the 1st of April. And so also want to say happy birthday to my grandson, Caleb. Caleb, Caleb, happy birthday. If you're watching, if you're watching, happy birthday. Grandpa, Grandma, I love you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I gave gave my grandson, I gave my grandson a, a, a huge bill. I gave my grandson a huge bill for his birthday, right? He said, Grandpa, I'm rich. <laughs> he said, I'm rich. I said, man, is that what it takes for you to be rich? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, give my parents some hearts on there. Oh, my little grandson said, Grandpa, I'm rich. <laughs> I don't take much for him to be rich, but he's rich according to him. Praise the Lord. And so I'm going to get ready to go into the word. But for you, we are praying today. For you, we are praying today. Amen. There are so many. We have received. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for loving on my parents with me today. I realize that one day I'm not going to have them anymore, Pastor Zena. I realize that one day we're not going to have them no more. Amen. So I try to make the best of them and try to give them as much love as I can now. Amen. And I want to thank all of you for joining in and giving them some hearts on here and loving on them for me and with us. Maybe I shouldn't put them, but maybe they should be over. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you for helping me to love on them. Amen. Thank you for helping me to love, love on them. In Jesus' name, thank you for helping me to love on them. Maybe I have them in the wrong spot. Maybe I should put them right here in between us, Pastor Zena. Maybe I should put them right here in between us right here. What do you say? Maybe I shouldn't have them blocking the um, blocking the chat. Maybe I should have them right here in between us. There you go. That's my parents there. Thank you all so much for giving us some love and for giving them some love on here. 
Yeah, I had them in the wrong spot. That's the best spot for them, right? Right in between us. Mommy and Daddy, we love you. Amen. We love you. And we celebrate you. And we thank God for you. We thank God for your spiritual uh, leadership, your spiritual guidance, your spiritual covering. Thank you for praying for us. And we've been praying for you all as well. Pray that the Lord will touch your bodies. Pray that healing will come to your body and your house today in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray, everybody. Let us pray. And then after prayer, we're going to go into the word, talking about end time people and end time traits. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we Thank you for another day. Thank you for another Sunday. Thank you for another moment, another hour that you have blessed us with to be able to spread the gospel, spread the world, and to show your word and to show love to your people everywhere. Hallelujah. Those that have joined us from near and far, you, city to city, thank coast to coast, and around the world. We thank you for all the membership. We thank you for the trustees, the leaders, the clergies, the ministers, the elders, the deacons, hallelujah, the apostles, the bishops. We thank you, God, for the missionaries and the evangelists. Thank you, God, for your children. Thank you for those that trim their lamps and waiting for your return. Thank you, God, for the precious Holy Ghost that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for leading us and guiding us. Those that sit and wait today of a word, pray that this word today will find root and ground in their hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And every day. Praise the Lord. All right, so I want to get in the word today because I don't want to have church long because I know y'all are some busy people. I know all of you are busy, and I know that there are a million things that you guys, praise God, could be doing today, but you took the time to stop here to hear something, and because of that, I have to share something with you. You know something I tell preachers? I tell preachers this because I was taught this. I was taught this, and I tell preachers this. Robert Gibson, I tell preachers this. If you are a preacher, if you've been ordained and called to preach the gospel, if you've been ordained and called to preach the gospel, you, you, must, always, you must always be ready to preach. You must always be ready to preach. That's your calling. That's your job. You must always be ready to do your calling. That's why you must always stay studied up, stay prayed up. So when you're called upon to do what you're called to do, you're ready to fire. One bishop says, you must always have a bullet in your gun. One late bishop, Bishop S.U. Thomas says, you must always have a bullet in your gun. And I tell preachers this today. And you know what kind of bug me out? It kind of annoys me. It kind of annoys me when I hear a preacher get up in front of the crowd or get up in front of a congregation and get up in front of a, um, uh, a people and say, oh, I wasn't prepared for this today, and, um, but I'm going to say, see what the Lord say. When I hear words like those, it just bugs me out because if you are, this is just my belief based on my teaching that I got when I was growing up and when I was consecrated and ordained. If I'm a preacher, I'm always ready. I'm always ready with a word. When I'm, when I'm finished preaching today, I'm already seeking the Lord for another word because I might just walk out, drive out, run into somebody, and they're going to look to me and expect for me to give them a word. It's like if you go to the doctor, Pastor Zena, and the doctor say, you know something, I can't, I can't work for you today. I can't help you with your heartache. I can't help you fix you because I'm not, I, I, I wasn't prepared for this. All right, hello, somebody, come on. <laughs> uh, listen to me. I, I teach my son that. I teach my son that. I teach my son that. I said, dude, you got to stay prayed up. You got to stay studied up. And you got to stay ready because people, when they need a word, you the preacher. You can't tell people I'm not prepared 
I wasn't ready for this. No, the devil is a lie. All right? So I'm always carrying a word. I'm always ready to share a word. And today, brothers and sisters, today's brothers and sisters, I want to talk to you today about, about this topic right here. End time people and end time traits. I want to talk to you about that today. You know why? Let me ask you this question. Have you, have you been looking around lately, Pastor Zena? Have you, have you been, I, I was looking at your nails. They were shining in the light. Oh. The nail, your nails are shining in the lights. Uh, okay, let me get back focus on the word. So, <laughs> yeah. But but have you been looking around lately and it's like you you're, you're kind of like stunned at the events of the world? Have you? Amen. Uh, those of you watching me today, have you been looking around lately? Lately, have you been just looking around and feel like you're in a play, you're in a strange place? Come on, y'all going to talk back to me today on there. Let me see you talking back to me. Have you been looking around lately? And when you look at what's going on, when, when you look at the news, when you look at the government, when, when you look at the government, when you look at the kind of government and the quality of government, and the, 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 when you look around at people and attitude of people, when you look around at the attitude of church folk, when you look around at the oh attitude God. of people who claim to be saved, have you been, have, have you been saying to yourself lately, what in the world? <laughs> what in the world? And have you have you came to the conclusion by yourself that this world is not your home? Amen. Have you have Absolutely. you recent come on, come on, talk to me. Absolutely. Have you recently came to the conclusion? Listen to me seriously, that this world is not my home. I feel strange. There's a strangeness that I feel. I, I even feel strange talking to people who call themselves Christians now. Because we're living in a time when uh, Lakeisha, even if you show people things in the Bible, even if you open the Bible and show people that this is what the Word of God says, they, 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 they don't want to believe you. They, they're going off of self. They're going off of how they feel. They're not going off the word of God. Even when you're opening Bible and you're showing them this is what the Bible says. This is how the Bible says you should conduct. Folk don't want to hear that no more. A anybody watching me like that, you, you don't really want to hear what the Bible says. You, you come up with a but. You come up with a but. There's, there's a conjunction you come up with. You come up with a conjunction when people show you scripture in the word. You come up with a conjunction. Well, Bishop, this is what the Bible says. But. But what's the but for? There, there is no but. There, there is no but. There is no explanation. There is no clarification. It is what it is. Do I have a witness out there? <clears throat> So, so today, I would like to revisit. This is actually a revisit. This Pastor Zena is actually a revisit because I think I've taught this lesson on here before. Uh, I, think I've, I think I've taught this lesson on the program before, but uh, I've kind of fine-tuned it a little bit. And so today, I want to take the next few minutes, the next few minutes that you will allow me to speak to you, the next few minutes that you'll allow me to share the word of God with you. I would like to take the next few minutes, brothers and sisters, and I want to talk to you on the subject today. Amen. And I pray, I really pray that, let's move this over. I really pray, I really pray that you will be blessed. You'll be blessed by today's message. Now, I'm, I'm not preaching for you to shout. I'm not preaching for you to scream. I'm, I'm preaching for you to, to, to have an understanding. I am preaching for you to grasp what the word of God is saying 
to you. That that's why I am preaching. That's that's why I am preaching. All right. So we're going to talk today about end time people, Paul and Moran, end time people, and end time trades. Because I want to share with you today, and I want to show you what the Word of God says would happen. Amen. I want to share what the word of God says about what we're seeing today and the craziness that we're living in. All right. So let's go to scripture. Let's go to scripture. Let's go to scripture. I like to talk scripture with you. Amen. I like to talk scripture with you. So let's go to scripture. Second Timothy chapter number three. Second Timothy chapter number three, and I think I'm going to read seven verses, seven verses I'm going to read, so get your, Annette Pitters, the Jamaican flag shows up, Annette Pitters, good to see you, Sister Annette, amen, Lakeisha Adams says, yes, you have, Bishop, but I appreciate the refreshing of the lesson, thank you, Jesus, amen, <laughs> well, if you, if you, if you're, if you're a member, you probably heard this message before. <laughs> if you're a member, you probably heard this message before. Because it's the same Bible. It's the same Bible. It's the same Bible we've been teaching for years. You know, I've been preaching now for 45 years, 46 years. Yeah, I've been preaching the word of God now for 46 years. Yeah, that's how long I've been preaching the word of God. That's a long time, ain't it, Pastor Zena? Amen. I've been preaching the word of God for 46 long years. Yeah, so I'm not really a rookie. I'm not really a rookie, all right? Just want to let you know I'm not really a rookie. I've been handling the word of God for a long time. Robert knows that. <laughs> Robert knows that. So let's go to the word of God. Let's go to the word of God, and then we're going to uh, lift something from the word in, in, in your hearing today. We're going to read seven verses. Second Timothy chapter three, one through seven. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. Perilous times. The word perilous, that word perilous means, uh, 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 unbelievable. Dangerous, catastrophous, uh, unbelievable things, unimaginable things will happen. We're seeing that now. We're seeing that now. So basically, the Bible is already being fulfilled. And most importantly, it is being fulfilled, Lakeisha, right in front of our eyes, right in front of our eyes. It's being fulfilled right in front of our very eyes. Yeah. Amplified, but understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear in the last days, right? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. For people be lovers of themselves, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, revelers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. Without natural affection. Without natural affection, we're going to talk about that later for all the LGBT people. For all the LGBT people, we're going to talk about without natural affection. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that do good. We're going to talk about that later. Huh? There are folk that despise people that's doing good. You're doing good, doing the right thing, and they're hating on you. It's by, it's by, it means you're chosen. They're hating on you. And they will be unloving, the void of natural affection, calloused, and inhumane. My God. Irreconcilable. 
malicious, gossips, devoid of self-control, intemperate, immoral, brutal haters of good. This is, this is the Bible explaining our condition. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of sensual pleasures. Sensual, sensual, off the feeling. Sensual, sexual feeling. Hmm? Rather than lovers of God. Feel good stuff. Having a form of godliness. Go to church, but church ain't in them. But denying the power thereof. Watch this. From such, turn away. I need, you to, I need you to underline that in your Bible. From such, turn away. From such, turn away. Holding a form of outward godliness, religion, although they have denied this power, for their conduct nullify their claim of faith. Avoid such people and keep far away from them. Bishop, the Bible says some people you just have to avoid. <laughs> For real, the Bible says that. Yeah. Verse 6. For of this sort, they were crept in houses and led captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. For among them are those who their ways into warm their ways into houses and captive morally weak and spiritually drafted women weighed down the burden of their sin, easily swayed by various, various impulses. Verse 7, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up on verse 7. Ever learning, smart but dumb, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Always learning and listen to anyone who will teach them, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. All right? End time people. End time traits. Heavenly Father, bless this witness, charge it with your power, and grant to your servant clarity of thoughts and precision of expression, we pray in the mighty name of of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lakeisha, we're living in the end time. We have established that. Huh? And we are establishing that people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, hmm? boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to parents, disobedient to parents, ungrateful on unholy question aren't we seeing this right now before our very eyes isn't this what we're seeing right now before our very eyes huh we're seeing this these traits are being demonstrated right now before our very eyes what does it say to you ladies and gentlemen it says to you that the bible is right <laughs> it says to you that the Bible is right. It says to you that the words of the Bible are right and is being fulfilled because you're seeing it right before your very eyes right now. Is that right? Huh? The traits. The, these are the traits of the end times. These are the traits of the end times. Now, can I just tell you something? Can I just tell you that these are people, these are, these traits are attitude and description of people's, real life flesh and blood people's behavior. This is not some uh, spirit coming from somewhere with that kind of behavior. This is spirit that's already in people. And these traits, these spirits are being manifested through people. 
Remember I told you before that spirit needs a body to act upon? Spirit does not act on its own. Spirit needs a body to get into and then start using that body to manifest and demonstrate what that spirit is. So, so when you look at somebody and they're demonstrating a spirit of loving themselves, we understand now that these end time tra traits have entered into the hearts of the people. Entered into the hearts of the people. Can I tell you something too? I'm not talking just about people in the world. Pastor Zena, we're not talking just about people in the world. We're talking about people also that claim to be Christian. Claim that they know the Lord. Claim that they go to church. But they become lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Money is their God. People will give up church for money. Oh, God. People will give up a worship service for money. People will sell out their brothers and sisters for money. Because they love it. They love it. Huh? Also, the spirit of boastfulness. Huh? It's one of them. Being proud and being abusive is another one. Spirits that's being demonstrated in people. Here's another one. Children being disobedient to their parents. These are traits of the times that we're living in, the end time, ladies and gentlemen. And it is saying to us that whether you want to believe the Bible or not, we're seeing a full demonstration, a full manifestation, and a full fulfillment of the Bible right in front of our very eyes. Hmm? Without love. The things people do tells you they have no love for one another. They have no love for anybody but themselves. Huh? Without love. And time traits. Here's another one, unforgiving, unforgiving. There's been an unleash of unforgiving spirit. People have a people, people, people have a people for years. People won't forgive people. People won't say they're sorry for nothing. People will do wrong to you and they don't forgive you. Hello, it's what we're living in. Church people too, slanderous. Hmm? It doesn't take anything today for people to start slandering one another. It doesn't take any much today for people to start slandering each other. Spreading wrong information. Spreading false information. Spreading lies. And think nothing of it. And think nothing of it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the end time. The scripture gives us another trait is without self-control. Impulsive, without self-control. Another trait of the end time. No self-control. People are just loose, loose, no self-control. Hmm? Not lovers of good. We're living in a time when it seems as if up is down and down is up and right is left and left is right. People calling right wrong and wrong right. Where y'all at? Are y'all still there? Here's another one. Lovers, treacherous. Treacherous people. Rash, conceited, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. I gave it to you in the scriptures and, and we just breaking it down for you now. Never seen so many people have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of the word. They deny the power of the spirit. Deny the power of the Holy Ghost. Deny the power of what the word of God could do. You dress up and go to church, but the church ain't in you. They dress up to go to church, but the church ain't in them. You, you ever find people will cuss you out in church? People, Christian, will fight 
in church. I, I, <laughs> people will people will literally fight you in church. No reverence for the holy ground. We used to sing a song back in Jamaica that says, we are standing on holy ground. Holy ground, the sanctuary, the church, the altar, holy ground. Holy, this is sacred, holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And the time we're living in now, one of the traits is people will cuss you out on holy ground. People will fight you on holy ground. People will shoot you on holy ground. Hmm? Hello? So the Holy Spirit has been guiding me to talk to you and to let you know that this is really the end time that we're living in and all these behaviors that we're seeing around us. All these behaviors that we are experiencing are behaviors and the traits of end time people that have lost their love for Christ, that have lost, hallelujah, the ability to love on Christ, to be in Christ, mm. to allow the word to dwell on the inside oh and to live for him. What if I told you that many are called, but few are chosen? You better believe me because that's what the Bible says. Hmm? You better believe me because that's what the Bible says. Many are called. Few are chosen. But few are chosen. What if I was to shock you? What if I was to shock you, ladies and gentlemen, and, 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 and say to you that not, not everybody that call themselves a Christian is on their way to heaven. Well, what if I was to shock you with that revelation? What if I was to shock you with that revelation that not everybody dressed up, not everybody that's dressed up this morning and claim to be a child of God, claim to be a Christian, is really on their way to heaven? What if I was to tell you that right now? I hope you would believe me. When you look around and you see the traits, when you look around and you see the traits of the end times happening in real life among real people, and watch this, among family members. I said it. Among Family members, among church members, hallelujah. But when you see the traits of the end time happening so close to you, I pray that this will lead you to understand that you have to now take, take your salvation seriously. I hope this is prompting you to make sure that your salvation is taken seriously. You, you have to make sure that you're not playing with this thing. You see, you, you have to now make sure you are not playing church. You have to now make sure that you are not playing church. Amen. I, uh, I taught a lesson the other night, and I, once again, I, I stirred up the hornet's nest. Once again, I stirred up the hornet's nest. I taught a lesson the other night and showed people the Bible. And I remember teaching the lesson, Pastor Zena, and I said, I said, listen to me. Don't, don't yell at me. It's what the Word of God says. Do you know how many people is attacking me and how many people is telling me? <laughs> And I, and I, that I'm, le I'm a legalistic preacher. I, I, I didn't make up the words. I didn't write the Bible. All I primarily did was just show you what the Bible says. But what if I told you 
that many today are not really interested anymore in what the Bible says. What they're interested in doing, what they feel like doing, what their desire feels like doing. And I may know many times your desire is not biblical. Many times people's desires aren't biblical. Many times people's desires aren't scriptural. This is why we have scripture and the word of God to govern our natural self, our natural flesh. Our natural propensities. That's what the Holy Ghost does. But what if I told you that there might be those of you watching today you're not really interested in following the word because the word is trying to change you. But you don't want the word to change you. You want to change the word. <laughs> and when the preacher show you what the word says, you attack the preacher. Hmm? It's the traits of the end times that we're living in that cause what we're seeing to be manifested. Are y'all still there today? Are y'all still there today? Hmm? Verse three, number three, they will be without natural affection, human affection. Hmm? Callous and inhuman. That's what we're seeing right in front of our eyes. It's being presented to us. It's being presented right in front of our eyes. If you are a true believer, if you are a true believer, and you understand now what the Bible says, and you're a true believer, I'm going to tell you something. I believe, Lakeisha, I believe, this, this is what I believe. I believe you should love a preacher that preach, preach to you the true word of God. That's what I believe. Robert Gibson, I believe you should love a preacher that's preached to you the true word of God from the word of God. You should love a preacher that's not sugarcoating the gospel. You should love that preacher. And you should support that preacher. Come on now. You should love the preacher that's preaching the gospel to you, showing you what the Bible says without sugarcoating it. And you should make sure you support that preacher. You know why? Apparently, that preacher might very well just be a chosen of God and is doing what God called him to do. Sometimes when you're doing what God called you to do, it's not popular and oftentimes, what's, what's right is not popular. Ah, oftentimes, what's right is not popular. And if you're a preacher who isn't trying to be popular, but trying to be right, it separates you and it sets you apart. Ah, you're a part of what is called the ecclesia. You're called out. Ah, baba. You're called out. And when you're called out and separated, you are different. And, and if God put his precious Holy Ghost and his precious anointing in you, it calls you to fear God, to fear the word of God, consider the walk that you walk, consider the talk that you talk, and be very careful how you present the word of God. Why? Because you're a watchman on the wall, and the Bible says now, the people that you watch over, their blood is going to be up on your shoulder if you fail to warn the people. Their blood will be upon your shoulder if you fail to tell them and show them, thus say the law. Show them what the word of God said. Can I get a witness today? My God. And so oftentimes when you oftentimes when you present Bible truths, oftentimes when you present the word of God and show people that this is what the word actually says, you'll be ridiculed. You'll be talked about. You'll be isolated. It's the end times. It's the traits of the end times. Many times, 
Truth tellers. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Look, he said, truth tellers don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> Woo! Truth tellers don't have a lot of friends. Preachers who are truth tellers are uh, don't have a lot of friends. Preachers who are truth tellers, end time preachers, glory to God, don't have a lot of associates. It's a loneliness that comes with being a part of the ecclesia. That's being a part of the call, not the church, royal priesthood, holy nation. Hey, come on, I feel like preaching in here. It's a price. It's a price. Where the church at? Huh? I might I might be too long. Huh? Let, let me let, let me point this out to you in a in a in a in a in a in a graphic way so you could conceptualize what I'm trying to say. Watch this. I'm gonna give you 19 people traits of the end times. 19 people traits I'm pointing out to you right now. Write this down. 19 people traits. Of the end time. If you're living around people, if you're living around people and you're experiencing this, number one, lovers of themselves, that's a trait <laughs> of end time people. Lakeisha, where you at? Audrey, where you at? <laughs> hey! And it pitters where you at. If you're living around people, huh? And you see this stuff here, you know you're living in the end time. 19 trade people trades of the end times. People be lovers of themselves, just stuck up on themselves, huh? Lovers of money, hmm? Boastful. Come on, now, end time traits. I'm giving it to you graphically. I'm giving it to you so you could you, you could actually look at this, amen, in, in an organized form. Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, end time traits. Proud, proud. Proud, very abusive, 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 hmm? end time traits. Next one, disobedient to parents, disobedient to parents, it's an end time trait. Next one, ungrateful, huh? Have you ever seen ungrateful people? <laughs> end time traits, glory to God. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting today. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting today. End time traits. Unholy. Unholy. Another trait of the end time. Unholy. I'm dropping it on you today. I am dropping it on you today because this is Bible that you need to think about. Without love. This is Bible you need to think about. Without love. 19 people traits. Hmm? Here's another one. Unforgiving. I, I, Bible. All that I'm showing you right now, all that I'm showing you right now can be found in your Bible. All that I'm showing you right now, all these traits I'm showing you is right here in the Bible. So that means the Bible is right. The Bible is true. The Bible is being fulfilled. Look at it. Look, 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 look at all these people traits of the end times that I'm pointing out to you today. I'm pointing them out. I'm pointing them out because you're seeing it. You're experiencing it. You're scratching your head. You're in amazement. You're in awe when you see people act like this. When you see people behave like this. When you see people sing praise and worship Five minutes and next five minutes they act like this. You see people talk about praise the Lord, they're blessed and prosperous in Jesus' name, and then next five minutes you see them. <laughs> uh, you see, you see them acting like this. You see them acting like this. Five minutes later, huh? You show them scripture and they get mad. You show them what the Bible says and they get mad with you. 19 people traits of the end time. These are people, saints. These are traits of people. This is not an angel coming from 
above. This is not an angel dropping out the sky. It's people that we live around. People that you encounter on a daily basis that possess these traits. Hmm? And when you see these things, what do we know, Pastor Zena? We know that this is... End times. The end time. And these are traits of the end times. I hope you're learning something today. I hope I'm breaking through to you today. Now, Scripture told us now, Scripture told us that we should have nothing to do with such people. We just read that in the Bible, didn't we, Pastor Zena? Amen. Said, have nothing to do with such people. That's what Scripture told us. To have nothing to do with such people. Hmm? Having a form of godliness, but deny the power. Scripture says, have nothing to do with people who deny the power of God. That, that's kind of harsh, but it's Scripture. Have nothing to do with people who have a form of godliness, but deny the power of God. That is the word of God. That is the word of God. Have nothing to do with such people. What people? What people? What people are we talking about? Let's back it up. There we go. Those people right there. <laughs> Those people right there. Could it be you're stressed out? Listen to me, people. Could it be you're stressed out, you're frustrated, you're annoyed, you're unhappy, you're not at peace? Listen to me. I'm talking to somebody today. Could it be you're stressed out, you're annoyed, you're not at peace, you can't find peace today because you constantly are dealing with and associating with people, end times people that possess these traits? Could it be? Could it be your association? Oh, come on, talk back to me, folks. Could it be your association with people with these traits, end time people with these end time traits? It's stressing you out, it's frustrating you, it's draining your strength, it's draining your energy, it keeps you constantly unpeaceful, you can't find peace, you praise the Lord, but then you associate again with these people and they just drain you. Could, could it be the Lord, could it be, could it be the Lord is actually using me today to give you a hint? Could it be that the word of God today is giving you an hint? Because the Bible says now from such people, you should have nothing to do with, you should stay away from them. Have nothing to do with such people. And that's Bible. That, that, that's Bible. Have you ever thought now that if you obey right here where the Bible says, and after you have identified the people with those traits, if you obey the Bible right here, you'll find yourself having peace. You'll find yourself having a little bit more relaxation. you find yourself having a lot less headaches. you find yourself having a lot less arguments. you find yourself having, oh, come on, somebody, talk to me. When you obey the Bible, have you ever thought about that? That maybe if you just obey the scripture, things may start falling into place with you again? Have nothing to do with them. Today I've presented to you end time people, end time traits. And the word of God says, the word of God says, from such people, you should turn away. From such people, you should turn away. Sounds harsh, but that's probably where your peace lies. Sounds harsh. But that's, that's probably where your deliverance is going to come. Sounds harsh, but that's where the joy that you need is going to come. 
Today I've shown you the word of God. Today I've demonstrated the word of God. I've shown you what the word of God says about where we are, the atmosphere we're in, the condition we're in, the climate we're in, and the people we are surrounded by. And I've also shown you, praise God, the behaviors based on scriptures that we are experiencing from people around you. You should go back to the Bible and read this on your own. You should, you should make this a part of your biblical meditation for, for today or for tomorrow. And sit back and read the scripture all over on your own again. And as you read that part of the scripture, amen, the part that I want you to actually focus on when you read the Bible again, read the scripture again, is this part. The part where the word of God says I have nothing to do with such people. That's having a form of godliness, but deny the powers there. I have nothing to do with them. And maybe if you, if you take that part of the word very seriously and start acting upon it, things will change for you. Because that's what the word of God says. When a revelation comes to our heart, when we get a revelation and we receive a revelation and our hearts receive the word, there ought to be some change in what we do. When the word of God gets in our hearts and is germinated in our spirit, there ought to be some change in our actions, Amen. our attitude, in our language, in our disposition. Mm. It bugs me out when people get the word and they still remain the same. It bugs me out when people get the word and they go back and do the same thing. It bugs me out when people get the word and you see no change in them. It means that you're 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 like you're like you're like what the Bible talk about the the sower the sower sow on different ground. What ground are you when you hear the word of God? Are you stony ground where the birds come and pluck it away? There are those of you who are going to receive this word today. You you receive it gladly, but by the time we we do the benediction and sign off, glory to God. <laughs> your surrounding is going to pluck the word away from you again. And by tomorrow morning, you're going to want to hear another word to build up, lift up your faith again. When the answer to your problem, the answer to your situation is to observe the sayings of the word, observe the sayings of the scripture and do this and do this. Observe the saying of the scripture and do this. I have nothing to do with them. Maybe you're mingling with people that you shouldn't be mingling with. Maybe you're in company that you shouldn't be keeping. Maybe you're in relationships that you're not supposed to be in. Come on, somebody. I know you got used to it, but you can't get used to ugly. You can't get used to dysfunction. So many of you have gotten used to dysfunction and think dysfunction is normal. Dysfunction is not normal. So many of you have normalized dysfunction. Dysfunction is not normal. At some point in time, the word of God has to correct your behavior. The word of God has to correct your thinking. At some point in time, hearing the word of God from a man of God that's showing you what the word says and telling you the, about the application of the word of God to your life right now. Not tomorrow, not next year, right now. The application of the word of God to your life right now could change your entire life. Here's the question. Do you want to be changed? Hallelujah. Do you want to be changed? Do you want the word to change you? Do you want change? Do you want to be better? Do you want to be a different person? Do you want to be a new creature? Do you want to be a true son of God? Do you want to be a child of God? Jesus says, I will know if you're my disciple, if you obey my words. That, that's how we, oh, glory to God. That's how we know if you're a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I will know if, that if you're my disciple when you obey my words and my ordinances. I can tell you if you're a true disciple based on my understanding of scripture. 
If you fail to obey the ordinances of God, if you fail to obey the words of God, if you fail to practice the word of God, it tells me, like Jesus says, that you're not really his disciple. He says, if you obey my words, if you follow my ordin ordinances, then we will know that you are my disciple. And so here's my question today for those of you watching me and for those of you listening to me tonight. Are you really a church goer? Are you a person that just have a form of godliness? Or are you a disciple of the word of God? The difference is the disciples will hear the word of God and move the change. Hallelujah. The disciple will come and sit down like right now and hear the men of God preach the word of God and will change their lives. Hmm? There's somebody watching me today. The Holy Spirit is telling me that this is what you need to do. Right here. This, your, your peace will come. Your joy will come. Your happiness will come. Oh, my shatter. Your freedom will come. Hallelujah. I feel God in here. Your freedom will come. Your joy will come. Your happiness will come. Your peace will come when you obey this part of the scripture right here. This part of the scripture right here. You may need to move. You may need to separate yourself. Oh, glory. You may need to withdraw. Ha, ha. You may need to stop going places you ain't got no business. Oh, glory <laughs> you may need to stop hanging with oh, glory. You may need to stop hanging with folk you're hanging with. But this right here is somebody's answer today. This right here, come to Christ. This right here is somebody's answer. Right here. Right here. Right there is somebody's answer that you're seeking. Somebody got an answer today from the word. Now you must obey the word. Now you must obey the word. Now you must hear my voice. Now you must hear what the Lord used me to say to you today. Now you must hear what the Lord used me to speak to you today. Now you must hear. Now you must hear. Now you must hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Can I tell you something? He's talking to you. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. Not your brother, not your sister, not your neighbor. You. Yes, you. He's talking to you. If you hear his voice today, hard not your heart. End time people, end time trades. You got the word, you got the revelation, and you got the answer. Now it's your move. Ha, shalala basata. It's your move, it's your move, it's your move. Come to Christ. Father, thank you God that we have delivered your words. We have delivered your message as your messenger. To a people, to a dying world. We have done our best. We have used what you give us to use. We have said, we have said what you ask us to say. Now Lord have your way. And may your word accomplish. Accomplish. Where it was sent today. May souls be delivered. May souls be set free. From your word today. It's in Jesus' name, your humble servant pray. Amen and amen. God bless you today. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to take this opportunity. I would like to take this opportunity because we have to do it. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind those of you who are members of our church, who are members of our ministry and supporters of our ministry, that our ministry still needs your continued support. The ministry needs your continued support. Amen. The studio needs your support. The radio needs your support. So these are ways in which you could be a blessing to the ministry. Tuck a little something away and help us over here to keep doing what we're doing for the Lord. God bless you today. I pray God's blessing over every hand that stretch forth to give. Father, bless every spirit that's giving freely. Every spirit that will give freely to the word. Give freely to to the ministry for the furtherance of what we do here. Pray God that you open the windows of heaven and pour our blessings on your people today in Jesus name. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, full fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, the divine comforter, rest remain and abide with us all now and forevermore. The Lord of God's people say amen. amen. And amen. God bless you. We love you. Stay sweet. In Jesus' name. Bishop Beach. If this program has been a blessing to you, then Bishop Campbell and Pastor Zena would love to hear from you. Send your praise report, prayer request, tithes, offering, and cash deductible gifts to Word of Life Ministries, P.O. Box 451, Brick, New Jersey 08723. That is Word of Life Ministries, P.O. Box 451, Brick, New Jersey 08723. You may send your donations via Cash App, Zelle, or Venmo. Our Cash App ID is dollar sign word of life 451 that is dollar sign word of life 451 you can send your zell to 215-526-3237 that is 215-526-3237 venmo id is word of life dash 451 that's word of life dash 451 on behalf of bishop campbell pastor zena campbell the word of life media ministry and the entire word of life ministries family we want to say thank you for your love and support god bless you in jesus name is our prayer see you next time